Hello, everyone. My name is Dane Duval. I am with Nova Southeastern University, and we have a program that is funded by the federal government called the Geriatric Workforce Enhancement Program. So today I'm going to share some information uh, about COVID. Uh, we have other information available on our website. And so this is one of the things that I wanted to go over, and it'll be a very short program, about 15 to 20 minutes about the COVID vaccine. Most of this information is for the Broward County, Florida area, but I'm sure that you can find other information for uh, anything in your neck of the woods. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now, and we'll get started um, with some of the information that we have today. Okay, so this is entitled Facts About the COVID Vaccine. Again, my name is Dane Duval. I'm with Nova Southeastern University, the College of Osteopathic Medicine, and the Department of Geriatrics. And this is the South Florida Geriatric Workforce Enhancement Program. I am an Alzheimer's uh, disease and related dementia curriculum coordinator for the GWEP. I'm also the task force lead for COVID. And also I am a certified Alzheimer educator and certified by the state of Florida to provide dementia education. So getting that out of the way, um, I wanted to cover some of the most common symptoms of COVID. Um, we know that the main three that were first uh, seen in uh, early 2020, uh, fevers or chills, dry or persistent cough, shortness of breath, uh, and difficulty breathing. But since then, over the last year, we have found that there are other common symptoms of COVID. Tightness or pain in the chest, fatigue, muscle, uh, or body aches, even joint aches, um, pain in the joints, you know, and this is stuff that's out of the norm. You know your body, uh, listen to your body and you'll understand uh, what might not be just right. A headache that lasts for a while, even if you're taking a pain reliever for a headache. Um, pay attention to these things. You might just have one that persists. It might be in combination. Um, a lot of people have uh, reported complete loss of taste or smell. And in fact, some people, that's the only symptom that they're reporting. Or in some cases, it's even uh, a distorted sense of smell. Some people have reported and, and it's been documented that people will smell um, distilled water or fresh water and it'll smell like caca to them. So we're seeing that that is a distorted sense of taste or smell, um, but also the loss of uh, sense or smell. And uh, these, these last few that I'm talking about are less than 10% reported by people who have COVID sore throat, uh, maybe combined with congestion or runny nose, maybe not combined with that, um, and also stomach issues, whether it be vomit, vomiting, diarrhea, stomach upset, um, loss of appetite, uh, or just general not feeling well, holding your tummy and saying, mommy, I don't feel good. Um, those are things to look out for um, as you monitor your, your health. So uh, in Broward County, where uh, Nova Southeastern University is located, we have uh, a number for our COVID testing. That phone number is 954-357-9500. Again, the number is 954-357-9500. Um, so the, the locations change. Some days they're here, sometimes they're somewhere else. One day it's closed, one day it's open. Uh, some day, days you might only wait an hour in line. Some days you may wait three to five hours. It all depends. You just, you don't know. You just have to go with a full tank of gas. Um, also, if you have someone, if you or someone that you know in your family or a neighbor or someone that you take care of is homebound, if an elder or a disabled person is homebound and are experiencing symptoms of COVID-19, then you call the same number, 954-357-9500, and someone will do an assessment. And if it's necessary, um, they will send someone out for COVID testing for a homebound person um, for that for those reasons. Anyway, um, since we're talking about the vaccine, so the state of Florida has an appointment line. I know people are hating this phone number, but it's only been out for a week, but this is the one place clearinghouse. It's 866-201-6313. I'll slow down this time. That number for the Florida COVID vaccine appointment line is 866-201-6313. If you're hearing impaired, the number is 
476-1526 for hearing impaired for making an appointment for COVID vaccine. Now, what it is, it's an interactive uh, phone line and what they will do is ask you information, basically your name, your date of birth, your zip code, um, et cetera. And they will call you back with an appointment to make your uh, vaccine appointment. Now, you can also help other people to make appointments. It's not just one phone call back. So if they call you back for your appointment, um, say, can I make an uh, appointment for my husband, my wife, my son, my daughter, my client? Um, they will uh, allow you to do that. What you need to do is you have to have all of the personal data of the person that you're going to make the phone call, the appointment for. Keep in mind, you will not have the same appointment time. Um, I know that in my house, someone, they called back. That person got an appointment for a week from now, from when they were talking. And then the person that was making the appointment says, can I make another appointment? They said, sure. And come to find out, they got an earlier appointment. Uh, it's just the luck of the draw. It's all a computerized system. And those appointments can disappear at the drop of a hat, uh, as many people are finding out. Uh, just today, they came out with a website for the state of Florida. Uh, as everybody knows now, you must be a resident of the state of Florida to get vaccine in the state of Florida. You have to show proof that you live in Florida. You don't have to live here full time, but you have to either show a driver's license, uh, an electrical bill, a utility bill, a lease, something that shows that you at least live in Florida part time. The website is www.myvaccine.fl.gov, www.myvaccine.fl.gov. Uh, what they do is you will pre-register for your vaccine appointment. You won't be able to get an appointment then. They will email you when you can get an appointment or um, I'm not exactly sure. This just came out today uh, before I got on here to um, do this recording. And so I'm not sure exactly how it's working, but I know that they say to pre-register and then they'll contact you with appointment. Um, I don't know if they're gonna call you. I'm not sure exactly how it works because it's brand new. My advice is, if you got a guy, then use a guy. If you can get an appointment somehow, if you happen to know the pharmacist at, at Publix or any of a community pharmacy, hook up with that person and say, hey, if you've got extra vaccines, let me in on the deal. Uh, I've heard, um, I've got friends who, I, I have a friend in Georgia who is a pharmacist and they um, get to the end of their day and all of a sudden they've got these vaccines that are going to go spoil and he will call people that he knows. That happens in some cases. I talk, uh, I heard about a woman on um, NPR. She was, she's 28 years old. She was shopping at a grocery store in DC and it, it was towards closing. They said, anybody who wants the vaccine come, we have five of them left that are going to go spoiled if we don't use them right now. Um, don't feel bad if if you are offered the vaccine and you think that you don't qualify for it, take it anyway. We need to get everybody vaccinated because we need to get to herd immunity. Most experts uh, believe that's between 75 and 85% of the population in this country either need to have had the vaccine or have been exposed to it by testing positive to COVID. Talk about that in a little bit um, later about immunity. So is this vaccine safe? Yes, it absolutely is. I've gone through all of the medical documents that are out for the two current vaccines. Um, the FDA would not be giving approval for this emergency use unless it was safe and effective. Both of the current vaccines, Pfizer and Moderna, are showing to be about 95% effective. What does that mean? It means that 95% of the people who were in the trials did not get COVID or did not have serious illness uh, from being exposed to COVID. That's a really important thing to remember because the annual, uh, the most current flu vaccine is only 45% effective. So imagine that that they came out with a brand new vaccine and it's 95% effective. 
The reason they could get to this so quickly is because for the last 10 years, they've been developing the technology that could deliver a pandemic sized vaccine. Once the DNA was sequenced and it was sent to us from China, the people who were working on vaccines, they developed a vaccine in six days. They were already ready. They were just waiting for something like this to have a break, an outbreak so that they could test this. Once they developed the vaccine, they, it went right into trials. And so between February and November was when all the three levels of testing uh, took place and the FDA approved um, in November and December for both Pfizer and Moderna. And by the way, they continue to monitor for any problems. I know that maybe people have read something in the paper or seen something on TV about a doctor who died, about people who have these severe allergic reactions. The FDA knows this. Um, Many millions of people, I believe somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 to 15 million people have had the vaccine to date. I'm um, recording this on January the 30th. Um, and so what's happened is over those people who have been vaccinated uh, and many people have already had their second jab. So if there was serious problems, the FDA would have shut this down. There are no serious problems outside of the norm. Um, every vaccine has some adverse effects. Um, there will be some people who will die. There will be some people who have strange illnesses that, that come from this, but it's a very, very small percentage of people. Um, but if you're concerned about side effects, what we're seeing is obviously pain where you got it. Um, and that could linger. I know mine lasted for a day and a half. And yes, I did get the vaccine. I'm only 60, but I went with my mom. And I was one of those people who the person says, roll up your sleeve. You're here. We're going to give it to you. So I said, okay, <laughs> I'm glad to get it. Um, the thing is, you might have fatigue, uh, headaches, muscle and joint pain, chills and fever. So other than that, um, we're not seeing much in the, the way of that. So Anyway, that's, that's what we're seeing right now. Um, but keep in mind, there are no reported cases of any serious safety concerns. Like I said, they would have closed it down. Uh, if you have heard about these severe allergic reactions, um, it's usually been people who have had other serious allergic reactions. Um, consult your personal physician. Um, I'll tell you, I had a uh, a really bad reaction to a medication I was taking about 20 years ago. Uh, that medication is no longer on the market and also it's not in the uh, vaccine. Also, um, I once, uh, within the last year and a half, I had an allergic reaction to an iron infusion. Um, and so I was concerned, so I contacted my healthcare provider. I said, so when I get the vaccine, should I be concerned? And she said, no, th there should be no reason. But if for some reason, if you do have um, an allergic, a severe or allergic reaction, uh, they have protocols in place at every single site that's doing the vaccine. And I'll talk about that in just a, uh, a minute. Just to let you know, there is no COVID-19 in any of the vaccines. That's the old way of doing vaccines. There is no live that, uh, culture or any part of the disease in the, the vaccine. I apologize for the, the, the loud no noises that are going on, but South Florida, of course, yard work continues no matter what the season is. Um, is this vaccine effective? Well, with Pfizer, which is uh, two doses that are done, the, the first one, and then the booster is done 21 days later. There was over 40,000 people, I think it was 43,000 people that participated. Um, half of the people received um, a placebo, the other half received um, the vaccine. There's 20,000 plus participants, uh, which is about half, that were in the trial that got the two doses of vaccine. Of those people who got both doses of the vaccine, only eight people contracted COVID-19 and only one person fell seriously ill. In the Moderna, which is two doses that are 28 days apart, they had 15,000 participants in the trial that got both uh, doses of the vaccine. And of those 15,000 plus 11,000 people contracted COVID and zero of them fell seriously ill. I'll tell you that in both studies, no one who received both doses of the vaccine died.
That's something to really take hold of understanding and look at these very low numbers of people who even contracted the disease. And it wasn't like they said, okay, let's keep you all enclosed during this um, two month trial. They actually, after they got their second dose, they just went about their normal day um, and they did not get, most of the people did not get COVID. Um, two things that we don't know right now, we don't know if the vaccine presents the spread of COVID. We don't understand yet if, if um, it causes us to not shed the virus, if we're exposed to it. So we're not sure about that, more studies being done. And we don't know how long the immunity lasts. Um, I've talked to people, you know, since the vaccine is now only, uh, people have started getting it in December. So we're talking, it's only two months old and really only one month um, after people have gotten their second jab. So we still don't know how long the immunity is going to last. I know that people that actually had COVID illness, um, I've heard some people don't, no longer have the antibodies after six months. I think this is a case by case um, study. I think it also depends on how serious you were. Um, maybe if you're exposed to more of the, the virus, you're going to have a, a larger immunity. We just don't know these answers yet. Why should you get the vaccine? First of all, we already saw that it's highly effective against getting COVID. We also know that if you do get COVID, you're not going to get seriously ill from the disease. Um, and it may keep others around you from getting it. We don't know that yet. That's why I put may in all caps. Um, and we know that it's a safer way. A vaccine is always safer than getting the disease. You build up the immunity by both of them. Um, and in most cases, a vaccine, you get better immunity results than from actually being exposed to the disease. And we know that, that um, this vaccine is going to be what eradicates um, the disease. And if we don't get rid of it, it will be manageable at least. Here are questions about if you should get the vaccine during certain circumstances. If you've had COVID, should you get it? Absolutely yes, just because you had COVID does not mean that you're going to have the same immune response to it as if you got the vaccine. So the CDC says, yes, get the vaccine if you've had COVID. What about if I get my appointment and I got COVID since I made the appointment? wait until you have recovered from COVID to get your vaccine. That's the same thing as whenever you get any type of vaccine, they will tell you if you have a current infection, if you have been exposed to certain things, if you're not feeling well, like if you've got, just like whenever you go for your flu shot, if you're not feeling well, they'll tell you don't get the flu shot yet. Um, what about if you have mild allergies, seasonal allergies, or maybe just mild allergies to shellfish or something like that? Yes, CDC says get the COVID vaccine. What about if you've had a severe allergic reaction, like I was telling you about my experiences in the past? Um, consult your physician. That is who will tell you uh, if you should get it um, or not. Um, in most cases, they're saying, go ahead. However, I do know that if you have, you didn't know you had an allergic reaction or maybe you've never had an allergic reaction, but after your first round, you have a severe allergic reaction. What they're saying is do not take the second dose. Remember the second dose is a booster. After two weeks, we're seeing that you're between 50 and 75% um, protected against COVID. Um, so, even at 75, even at 50 something percent, you're still pretty safe from um, the disease. So they're saying that if you have an allergic reaction after the first one, then you shouldn't get the second one, but again, contact your physician. And what about if you're immunocompromised or if you're on immunosuppressant um, medications? Again, consult with your physician. They're saying that people that are immunocompromised may not have as strong a um, protective field against the disease just because of their immune system. Um, they still haven't done enough studies of that. There weren't enough uh, volunteers in the study that were either HIV positive or other uh, immunocompromised 
Um, so we don't know yet. So they're gonna do real world studies now to see those of uh, people in the, in, that are taking the, getting the vaccine and, and seeing what the reactions and also the protections. Some of the other concerns, which vaccine should you get? It's whichever one they wanna give you. Take what they give you. Do not say, oh no, I want this one. I'm gonna wait. Whatever they got, take it. Um, today in the news is Johnson and Johnson. They're, you know, they're reporting their um, significance. Uh, Johnson and Johnson is only one jab. Uh, it's not followed up with a booster. But what they're seeing is that that's only at the very top end. It's about 72% effective. But keep in mind, the flu vaccine is only 45%. So we'll take. Um, 72%, there's also maybe some lower numbers when you mix all of their studies together. But in the US, I believe it was 72% effective. However, all of these variants are concerning everyone. Uh, Johnson & Johnson just announced that theirs is not effective um, against as effective. It's only about 50% effective um, for the South African variant. Um, we don't know what is the US variant because I'm pretty convinced that there is one. I mean, we already have the Brazil, we have the German, we have all of these variants, the, the, I'm sorry, not the German, the UK version, the South African. Um, but I read today that both uh, Pfizer and Moderna is already uh, creating a new booster just in case the, the one that they develop is not holding up to these variants and other variants that will be coming along. Many people believe, um, as I mentioned earlier, that we're gonna get this every year. We're gonna get the first round and then we'll get a booster uh, once a year. I believe that's what most people are thinking, especially now that we're seeing all these variants come to pass. Um, what happens, well, we already know that there's, the one question that, that we already know, is there enough vaccine? No, there's not because if there was enough vaccine, everybody who wanted it could get it right now. Um, they had promised um, 20 million people by December 31st. I think the actual number was 3 million people. I think we're getting closer to 20 million right now, but we're at the point now where p many of us are getting our second dose. Um, some states are holding back the doses so that people can get round two. Supposedly the Biden administration is saying that that's not the case, that go ahead and give everybody their first shot, we'll make sure that the second shots. And what happens if on day 21, they tell me, oh, guess what? You, you, you have to postpone your appointment or on day 28. Guess what? These are booster shots. They are to make the vaccine more effective. You will not have any problems and do not freak out if it's not done on day 21 or day 28. In fact, my appointment for my second shot is on day 24. Uh, of the Pfizer. So don't worry about it. You will get your dose and everything will be just fine. However, that being said, what are the after effects of the second dose? I talked to, I was doing a class this morning and somebody said that all she had was about four hours of her arm hurting. I have talked to many people who say, it feels like a Mack truck ran over me the day after, that night and the day after. Um, even scientists are reporting this on the, on the people who are getting second doses that more of the side effects are being felt. Um, I talked to my healthcare provider. She had just had hers done and she said she went home. She felt horrible. She had a headache. She's a new mom. She wasn't worried because she was already prepared for it. Um, and what's interesting is she goes, yeah, I don't feel good today. Look at the way I'm dressed. I just don't care, but I'm here. I'm taking care of you. So the thing is my advice, plan the day after to just do nothing. If you can do it on a weekend and you work full time, that's a good idea. If not, plan to be off the next day. I know my mom and I are both getting our vaccine a week from tomorrow. And we've already got planned. It's a Saturday on Sunday. I'm going to make a big breakfast if I'm available. If not, I'll have it delivered. And we are going to watch Hallmark and Lifetime movies all day Sunday. That's all we've got on our, our schedule. Um, and my advice is to, is to do the same. So um, plan the day after to just not. And, and if, if you're good to go, then guess what? You've got an extra day go to the beach or something. Anyway, be careful about misinformation. Everything that I've told you here today is researched. Um, I can back it up. If you need uh, proof of what I've had to say today, I can give you citations and give you the articles that I got from um, the information from. But you know what? If you don't, don't believe everything you see or hear. Um, if a family member or somebody tells you something that you just, they say is gospel, 
tell them to tell you where they got the information. I'll be glad to share you with you where I get my information and anybody who shares information, um, make sure that you get that information um, from them. And, and keep on top of what vaccines are available. We've got two other groups, one that's not, doesn't look so good. It doesn't look like his um, is going to pass uh, approval from the FDA and another one that's just been approved in Europe. Uh, we're all waiting to see the, the results of this. The more vaccines that are out there, the better it is going to be for everyone because we want to get to that herd immunity, whether by infection or through inoculation. Again, make sure that you continue to follow the safety protocols. Just because you are vaccinated does not mean you're not going to get COVID. I know the, that the percentages are very low and more than likely you're not going to get serious illness, but what happens if you don't know you have COVID because you were protected from getting ill? Maybe you would test positive, which means you might be able to pass it to someone else. We don't know that yet. So continue to wear your mask or two masks, continue your social distancing and for goodness sakes, wash your hands and keep using that hand sanitizer. Remember you, if you're 65 and older or if you are in the high risk group, please continue to take precautions. There's our beautiful site again. Take a deep breath. Cleansing breath is good whenever you need to de-stress. Just breathe in and breathe out. It's really good for everything uh, for healing purposes and just for, for peace of mind. Again, here's the survey. If you've got a, a iPhone or Android, just open your camera. It'll pop up your the survey. Answer those six questions. This uh, title of this presentation is Facts About COVID Vaccine. And if you will answer these questions, it's very helpful. We like to, to get feedback on these presentations. Um, and anyway, again, my contact information, dane at daneduval.com. You can see that on the screen. It's D-A-Y-N-E at D-A-Y-N-E-D-U-V-A-L-L.com. And again, I'm with Nova Southeastern University. If you need more information or you wanna uh, get further information that the university provides, then go ahead and reach out to me. And thank you very much for your attention today. And that's the end of this program and thank you for your time.